Morning, 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 everybody. How you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. I'm Sean Butler. Bugsy Malone is at the Vets this morning. I'll talk about that at the end. We'll get through the Tottenham stuff first. How are you? I hope you are all happy and healthy doing the things that you love with the people that you love doing them with. Please do me a favour, guys, like you always do. Excuse me. Hit the like button on the video. The last two videos that we've done, over a thousand likes each. <laughs> it's madness. Absolute madness. You guys are insane with the support. I really, really appreciate it. Genuinely, thank you so much. We're also only 300 away from the uh, big 10K in subscribers, so if you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do that as well. Get on board the journey. See where we can take this bad boy. Hit the notification bell and drop a comment, guys. Let me know your thoughts on today's topic. Sorry I went away yesterday. I had a day off. I wasn't feeling great. So I thought I'd uh, leave you in peace for 24 hours. And in that time, some of the news drops that James Madison is close. And I wake up this morning to find that it's closer than close. It's now imminent. Could be done by the end of the week. Personal terms are agreed. Nine million a year, 180 grand a week. Or about 29 pence a second is what we figured out in a WhatsApp group yesterday. <laughs> A lot of money, a lot more money than he was getting at Leicester, but he's a wonderful player and a really important cog. That locksmith, the guy that can pick through the final stubborn defences or defensive midfields of teams that are coming to White Hart Lane or when we go to their place and they are just sitting in and hoping to protect their own goals before breaking on us. It's been a constant struggle for us over the last two or three seasons. We never really replaced Christian Eriksen. Maybe finally in James Madison, we're gonna have that guy. He is going to be an absolute, absolute perfect fit for the system. And someone that I think at the valuation, give or take is about right. It looks like 40 million is where Tottenham are at right now. 40 million up front, and then maybe 10 million or slightly more in add-ons and installments. And Leicester are kind of finding their way down from 60. So it looks for all intents and purposes like Tottenham are by far and away the front runners. I wouldn't rule out late challenges from Newcastle, but that story seems to have gone a little bit quiet. Maybe the Tonali news, maybe pushing Grimarish up into the, into the 10. Maybe that is the reason why they're walking away. Or maybe, maybe just maybe, James Madison has let them know it's Tottenham. And that would be interesting. I've seen a lot of debates over, on various channels over the last 48 hours about whether or not Newcastle are, you know, now the top six team and Tottenham have been kicked out. I've seen Tottenham fans defend Tottenham and, and suggest that Newcastle at the moment at least are just a one season wonder. And on every other relevant metric, Tottenham are still a bigger club. But I've seen Newcastle fans defend their team um, and do a good job at it as well. It's interesting. We'll have to see what happens there. But if Madison has chosen Tottenham over Newcastle, then maybe that's a win for us. And it'll be a nice one to, uh, to think. A nice bit of kind of confidence boosting as we go into the next stage of the window. And that next stage of the window has to be, well, first and foremost, getting these two done. Hopefully by the end of the week, we might see Vicario, who's in London having his medical. Hopefully we're going to see him holding the shirt over the next... I don't know, two or three days, and maybe it'd be ideal to get them both done at the same time. Finish the week on Friday, seeing James Madison holding a shirt and Guillermo Vicario holding his shirt up. And that is two brilliant cogs into the Posta Coglu system. We know we've already got Udoji, who we haven't yet seen. Hi guys. We haven't yet seen this season uh, in the Tottenham shirt since he signed last summer, but we are looking forward to that. I personally think we can see Basuma as being a new signing as well. Personally, I think last season was one just to chalk off. I think he's going to be a brilliant, brilliantly important piece of the jigsaw. Then we've got to get the centre-backs done, right? Really simple. We need two of the five players that we've been linked with, and then maybe a third if we can figure it out in a minute. And I'll come to why that might be when we talk about Harry Kane in a second. But So when we're looking at the centre-backs that we've been linked with, we know who we want. As a Tottenham fan base, I think it's clear most of us would love to see Edmund Tapsoba come in. We've already been rejected by Aymeric Laporte. The less said about that, the better. Shame for him, shame on him. I understand it, if I'm honest. Like We haven't done enough as a club to maybe attract that level of player. We move on. If Tapsoba's eager and willing to come, and he said he is, or he looks like he is, then we can get that done amazing. Whether or not he and Mickey van der Ven are competing for one, one spot, 
or whether or not there's an option to buy bring both of them in because M Mickey van der Ven can play in a variety of positions on the left hand side he can play on the left back's role as well so a bit of a utility player it'd be excellent to get both of them in 26 million for van der Ven I don't think that's too much money for a player with his talent and his ceiling and, and how highly rated he is but he is absolutely raw he is without the kind of finished article moniker that you could put alongside his name the same would be said for players like Roger Ibanez like Castello Luqueba another player we're heavily linked with again today from France brilliant brilliant young talented centre-back who has all of the same kind of prerequisite requirements they're good in the air they're fast they're good at tackling good at interceptions they can do all the defensive things but they also have the confidence when the ball gets put to their feet to ping it with their left or to draw the ball and run with the ball with confidence and try and draw that man out create space for the next guy I think it comes with the territory when you look at players that, that play in that style that they all have a little bit of rawness a little bit of a rashness to them like Romero an over willingness to slide in and over an over emphasis on trying to tackle people um, and and have to you know, leave the leave their feet get onto the floor all of that stuff is sometimes it hurts us sometimes it's it's very helpful I think in Romero's first season it was very helpful in his second season it really cost us too many times but I think that as I say players that want who are defenders who want to have the ball at their feet and run with it rather than passing it sideways or passing it back to the goalkeeper players that, are, that want to look up and get the ball moving forward rather than taking the easy option I think they are generally risk takers at centre back stage and for me that means that if we're looking for players that can play that we as a fan base have to tolerate that with the good comes sometimes the bad or the ugly you don't really want to train that out of them too much because then they, you change the player so I think we just have to accept that a little bit that you're very unlikely to find at the level we can go to players that are entirely capable and confident of doing all of the aggressive things going forward but yet still main maintaining a very measured calm presence about all of their defensive decision making I just don't necessarily think that there's too many of those players out there and if they are they're probably at the very highest price points and probably wouldn't be coming to Tottenham right now the only area guys that we haven't really spoken about recently is the forward line and I was under the impression, I've been, I've been saying it, that whilst there was options for Harry Kane to go to Real Madrid, when Real Madrid cl closed the door on that, saying they're not going to sign anybody else this summer, and Manchester United seemingly being frozen out of the race for Harry Kane by Daniel Levy saying, that's not happening unless you bid a ridiculous amount of money. And because of Manchester United's current takeover situation, you know who's going to be writing those checks? Is it the Glaziers? Is it Sir Jim Ratcliffe? Or is it Sheikh Jassim from Guitar? You know, not knowing who's doing that stuff it kind of adds too much complexity so I was under the impression that Harry Kane was probably going to stay at Tottenham and I still think it's very likely that that might happen however the news today is pushing that the story for Harry Kane to buy Munich is seriously heating up that it's not just uh, we're not paying lip service to a clickbait article most of the journalists that are now writing about this are journalists that generally take their own integrity a little bit more seriously and don't just write nonsense articles and whilst we haven't yet seen it come out from someone like a Fabrizio Romano places like the Telegraph the Independent the Observer the Times these guys are all say it, you know talking about this story as well now now that could just be because the mainstream media want to see the best players going to the best teams you know how I feel about that but at the same time it's worth you know mentioning that it looks like according to reports that Bayern Munich have said to Osserman, Victor Osserman's agent, that they're right now entirely focused on getting the Harry Kane transfer done, and that they've spoken to Charlie Kane, and apparently the noises of like the family, i.e. his wife and children, they are willing to move to Germany, and that has been supposedly a stumbling block, you know, with regards Harry Kane's desires to leave the UK or to leave London in the past, but apparently that might not be the case anymore, and that the final piece of the jigsaw then is whether or not. Tottenham are going to accept the bid or whether Manchester United will pay what Tottenham want and apparently the number for him to move overseas is a lot less than the number for him to stay in the Premier League and it could be as low as 90 million euros or 83 million pound which you know I've said before that is around the Goldilocks zone where if 
Daniel Levy has been told under no uncertain terms that Harry Kane will leave for free if you don't sell him this summer, then 90 million around there is a number that Daniel Levy has to look at very seriously because you could make the argument that if he turns it down and Harry Kane does leave for free next summer, then that is negligence to not re recognize the situation and to receive a significant sum of money for a player that is in the final year of his contract and that has made it clear behind the scenes that he has no intention of signing a new contract. If that is the case, I hope it's not the case. I would love Harry Kane to stay and sign, but if he's not going to sign a new contract this summer and there is no noise that there's anything like that going on, there's no contract negotiations going on. If there were, you would have heard about it. And so you have to kind of put two and two together, I think, and probably get four, maybe get five, but assume that the Harry Kane wants out. And if, if Daniel Levy is refusing to meet with Manchester United or Chelsea or anyone else, then I could understand him not wanting to sell to a Premier League club even for 120 million. But to not sell him to Bayern Munich for 90, if you know he's going to leave and maybe go to Manchester United next summer anyway, then Daniel Levy will rightly to face all of the ire for, for letting that value slip through the club's hands and Tottenham will need to find a future without Harry Kane at some point whether that is you know this this month this year next year or in three or four years time at some point Harry Kane will have scored his last goal and Tottenham need to think about the future with that regard in that regard how does it look this summer if we were to sell him for 90 million what does that do what, what do Tottenham need to go with that do we look at Richarlison and see a good enough player that can fit Postacoglu's system to, to try and fill Harry Kane's shoes Personally, I don't think he is anywhere near good enough to even get 30% of the goals that Harry Kane gets. However, I do think he will be a better player this season coming than what we saw of him last season. I think the systems and the styles will fit. But maybe Postacoglu can see more than enough value in going after one of his previous stalwarts in Kyogi Furuhashi. You know, a player that hasn't played in the Premier League, but according to a lot of people in Scotland think he has the absolute stones to do it he's an absolute workhorse he knows the system he knows the style and if Postacoglu wants to recreate and emulate and replicate the exact model that he had at Celtic then as I've said before there's question marks to me over whether or not Harry Kane even fits that number nine role specifically because of the amount of sacrificial lamb tendencies that it requires it requires a player to not be involved entirely in the build-up play but to be on the end of the build-up play that is created elsewhere and to to draw players out of position during the build-up and I don't think you, sh you are you going to be using Harry Kane to his full effect if that's what you're going to be asking of him to do so if Harry Kane was to stay you either don't play him in the nine or you change the role of the number nine if Harry Kane's to go which it lo looks like it could do he could be then what do you do with that 90 million? Do you go and find someone who's better than Richarlison? Do you go and get the Furuhashi because he knows the system? Is he good enough though to, to make the leap from the Scottish League to the Premier League? Time will tell. Do you go somewhere else in the middle ground, spend 50, 60 million pounds on a player that does fit that model? And if so, who is that? That's for another conversation. But then you could use the other 30, 40 million that's left over to be the bridge in the negotiations to try and get in a Mickey van der Ven and a Tapsoba rather than one or the other. Maybe we need a third. Maybe we need a defensive midfielder, another number six. We spoke about this in the day before yesterday's video when we put out the ideal first 11, the potential first 11, which does look superb on paper. Vicario, Udoji on the left, maybe Tapsoba and Romero in the middle, and let's say Emerson Royale on the right. And then in, in behind that, you have Bissouma, Bentoncourt, Madison, Sun, Kane, Kulisevsky. When you look at the, the second 11, the, the 11 behind that, it starts to get a little bit weaker in the middle when you're looking at you'd have to have probably Saar and Skip and end on Bele. Presuming you're going to sell Hoybier because I don't think Hoybier necessarily fits any of those the six or the two eights either. Um, maybe just maybe you need some of that change in the Harry Kane role to go and get someone better to compete with Basuma for the six role. Also bearing in mind, of course, that you're not going to have Bentoncourt for at least three or four months into the season. So. I think there's still work to do in the midfield, even after you've got James Madison. But let me know your thoughts, guys. Does Harry Kane stay or go? Would you accept 90 million for if it went to Bayern Munich? What about James Madison? How excited are you about this one? Do you think this will immediately elevate the window to a baseline of, say, six and a half? What about the players going out? Why aren't we seeing any of those names being linked anywhere? It's very, very frustrating. But I'm going to leave it there. You might see another one from me later on today. 
Uh, please send your best wishes to Bugsy Malone, who has got a grass seed in her ear and it's pushing against her eardrum and it might perforate it. She's under sedation right now. They're going to remove it. And apparently if it does pop the eardrum, it can end up with neurological issues for Bugsy where she'll be walking with her head lean and her eyes will be rolling. It's going to be really weird and sad. So send your best wishes to her and uh, I will see you on the next one. Like, subscribe and comment, guys. And as always, bye-bye.